If you listen to classical music long enough, especially piano music, you will hear this famous left-hand part. Here's another version of this left-hand part. This is known as the Alberti bass. It's a left-hand accompaniment figure made up of broken chords. This left-hand pattern is used to sustain chords throughout a measure, since, as you know, you can get quickly tired of just hitting a block chord at the beginning of each measure. These famous left-hand accompaniment patterns were named after Domenico Alberti, an 18th century composer. Alberti wrote operas, songs, and sonatas for keyboard instruments, and that's what he's best known for today. His sonatas frequently employ this arpeggiated accompaniment in the left hand, in one form or another. And so all these patterns that were developed, they came to be known collectively as Alberti bass. Now, while Alberti was one of the earliest composers to use these accompaniment patterns, he was not the first, nor was he the only one. The most well-known of these patterns consists of regular broken chords, three-note triads, with the lowest note sounding first, then the highest, and then the middle, and then the highest again. And you can do it in inverted form. The other pattern that I mentioned is simply the triad played from the bottom up. And once again, it doesn't always have to be in root position. Today, Alberti is regarded as a minor composer. His works are played or recorded very infrequently. However, the Alberti bass was used by many later composers and it became an important element in much keyboard music of the classical music era. The most famous example of this left hand, this bass pattern, is one that I've used a few times in previous videos. It comes from this famous Mozart piano sonata. Starts out using the Alberti bass. Mozart also used the second example in the second movement of another piano sonata. So it's this Alberti bass. Of course, Mozart used these patterns in many other compositions. Beethoven also used it, famously in the last movement of the Moonlight Sonata. Of course, he was playing it a lot faster. That's the Alberti bass, but what you may not realize is that the Alberti bass has a lot to do with the left-hand patterns that you encounter in rock and roll, especially early rock and roll, and boogie-woogie. So if you listen to or play early rock and roll or boogie-woogie, you will see some similarity between the left-hand patterns. So, for example, this Alberti bass, very basic, it can become this pattern, the difference being some dotted notes. <laughs> and here's a pattern where we use an outline of the C6 chord, where we add the sixth note of the scale, and we leave out the third, and we play something like this. To further illustrate this, let's use an old song that my dad loves. He's 94 as I'm recording this, and he just bought himself a keyboard. This is a song called Sentimental Journey. Now, you could play it straight with an Alberti bass.
But if we use this bass pattern, this outline of the C6 chord with the dotted rhythm, you can play it like this. A little bit of swing. My dad loves to hear me play that. One of the most famous boogie-woogie left-hand patterns outlines the chord. It's in a more complicated way, but it still follows the principle laid down by the basic Alberti bass. So there's the, the root, the third, and the fifth. So these three notes are in there, but there's just a bunch of other notes surrounding it. Another famous rock and roll pattern. Here's another boogie woogie left hand pattern. Here's an example of me using this in a live setting. I'm going to play you a clip from a YouTube video featuring a singer named Sybil Gage, with whom I worked for about 10 years. And this is me accompanying her playing a song called House of Blue Lights. And you'll notice as you listen to this that I actually use two different left-hand patterns in playing this song. So I use this one. And I also use this one. As you can see, these left-hand patterns are direct descendants of the Alberti bass. Here's another left-hand pattern that you might hear. playing was a little sloppy there, but you get the idea. Here's another example. Now there are other left-hand bass patterns that can be derived, in a sense, from the Alberti bass. Jerry Lee Lewis used to just play... And then sometimes when he really got going, he'd just be pounding away. These are accompaniments that are based on taking the chord and just breaking it up, playing it different ways. So now you can have some fun with the Alberti bass. You can take your favorite rock and roll song and play it with a straight Alberti bass, and you end up with something like... Now it sounds like a classical piece, doesn't it? And so as you listen to some boogie-woogie or you listen to early rock and roll, pay attention to those left-hand patterns. 
because they are, in a sense, direct descendants of the Alberti base. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, and I'll be happy to respond. If you'd like to support my work, you can go to my Patreon page. If you'd like to contact me directly, you can go to my website, athomewithmusic.com, and fill out the contact form. I will leave the links below. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to speaking to you in the next one.